Hi, this is Garrett Gunderson, your host for tonight's Hour of Power. Unless you're watching it on an archive, then it might be any time of the day. But uh, I'm excited to be bringing to you the mind-body connection. We're going to be talking about the physical area because it seems that when there's a breakthrough in that area that the other areas can really open up with the new energy, with the new zeal, with a new excitement and zest for life, especially with the experience of self-confidence. It, it seems to be an awakening for sole purpose for many people. So um, we've brought in Marcy Locke to talk to us. And as you can see, she's super fit and ready to kick some butt. And uh, the, it's not just about working out and exercising. It's actually about being able to eat more and work out less, unless you're not working out at all. Then uh, it's really hard to do less <laughs> than that. But then what a lot of programs are talking about out there, yet have massive breakthroughs. So her program is really about breakthrough, and I'll let her talk about what she's really going to cover, but I'll be interviewing her as we go through this mental and physical arena of the five tracks of wealth. So remember, there's financial, sole purpose, mental and physical, which we're really going to cover, and then social. And I'll tell you what, I'm sure the social aspect opens up quite a bit when you get the mental and physical aspect Every taken aspect care of as well. Every aspect opens right? up when you get that. Mm -hmm. All right, so, you know, you're, you're president and founder of mm -hmm. Ever... Everlasting, Everlasting Fitness, Fitness mm -hmm. right? And yep. uh, so you've got your, you've got nutritional expertise. I know that you can teach people how to snack healthy and totally. eat good, tasty food, but delicious. Also, be good for your body, yep. right? Yeah. You're really into this transformation, not just about uh, you know, hey, get fit, but it's about a real transformational experience. Totally. And that's what you're mm -hmm. dedicated to. Um, so why don't you tell the you know listeners, watchers a little bit more about yourself? Okay. Well. Um, I guess the reason I got into doing what I do is because I struggled with my weight my entire life. It was probably about, or actually what I now understand the mind aspect to it, I realized that I had a core belief when I was four years old from, I remember my mom like, you know, trying to lose weight and like all moms do, right? And she said, she was so upset that she gained back five pounds. And at the time I said, well, maybe God gave that back to you because you needed it. And then I remember her wanting to go walking and she wouldn't hold my hand because she had to burn calories. My mom's amazing. I don't want to, in any way, she went through her experience as a, a child that weight was so important. So at the age of four, I created a belief from that event that if I didn't have a perfect body, I wasn't good enough. I know you, I've heard you talk about the event that you remembered like second grade or first Milk grade, carton. right? Yeah. yeah of feeling stupid and that, what that created for you. So from events that happen in our lives, we create certain decisions about it, which mm -hmm. create behaviors, which create the results that you have. Right. So I started down this Belief pattern, equals behavior totally equals be do have, right? Yep. So I, I started these behaviors that created this. By the way, she's been through fast track. Yeah. <laughs> I went through these behaviors that created me looking for or creating certain results. So by the time I was 14, I was anorexic and bulimic. Um, I did that till about 18, 19, and I just con I was like, this is no sort of life. So I said, there's got to be a better way. So I continued to right. try every diet, pill, program, quick fix, you name it. A couple years later, after still continuing to do that, here I was eating like a rabbit and working out hours at the gym and still having the same results. In fact, if you want to see the, this would be the, this is the cute before picture of me. All right, so that was eating like a rabbit. <laughs> Let me walk up to the camera here. <laughs> I can't see it. Is that good? Can you, can you get that on there? Yeah, pretty scary picture. That was how I and looked. ready to kick your butt afterwards, <laughs> right there. So, yeah. so that was my experience so far. With all those years of obsession over weight, I still was big, ate hardly anything, and I worked out a ton. So it was finally one day that I, it's like it just clued in for me. I said, you know, okay, why isn't this working? Mm -hmm. This doesn't make any sense. And you know that when you kind of question insanity, definition of insanity, I know you know this You're one. doing the same thing. Same thing over and over and expecting a different result. result. And yet we continue to do the same diet, pill, you know, quick fix, all these things over and over again, expect something different to change. And I questioned it finally. I said, why isn't this working? And what else can I try? And it was literally something divine that whispered in my ear and said, you haven't tried education. And I was like, what the the freak. Right. <laughs> but then I, I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't. Well, I, yeah, people don't know how to eat right. Um, they don't know how to truly exercise and where they mm -hmm. might actually be burning fat versus like out of their cardio zone we're or just, whatever it is. We're so. just so overwhelmed by the collective conscious agreement of society. This is how right. we do it. Which the collective <sighs> conscious agreement will kill you. Oh, totally. I mean, it's, it's basically, what do we have? Uh, uh, high, high fructose corn syrup. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. That's basically what yeah. we're eating in 90% of the food. Yep, totally. There, Everything. Right? But it's this, this, we've been so bombarded our entire life that it's like ingrained in us, just like these core beliefs. They're ingrained right. in the us. The food pyramid. Yeah, they're ingrained <laughs> in us, these myths and these things that actually work completely against how we work. So I started looking at them. I'm like, I've never learned how my body works with food or exercise. I've just looked for the next 
pill program workout. Right. So I dedicated my life to it. Long story short, you know, once I got educated and I understood how to work with my body, literally, I became a fat burning machine. So you, you eat more mm -hmm. oh, yeah. now. Oh, I eat more than any guy that I know, too. That's a challenge, by the okay. way, because, yeah, I do. And so how, how in the world could you be eating that much it's, food and be this fat burning machine? It's, it's understanding how to work from your body. When you're actually eating less and little, your insides, your internals, your, um, it's like, yeah, exactly. There's conservation mode. There's a hormone in your brain called leptin. And what happens when people diet is leptin levels drop by up to 50% plus. Mm -hmm. What that does, it makes your metabolism drop. It makes your, your thyroid go out of whack. It makes your abdominal cortisol go crazy. It, and yeah, and it cortisol actually, just have fat just totally. There, right? It turns your body into a fat storage mode versus mm -hmm. a fat burning mode. And when you understand how to work with your body, you literally can eat every single meal to be a fat burning machine. You eat a ton of food. You work out a lot less when you understand how to work with your body with exercise. It's got to be nutrient rich type food is yeah that the well way that it works? it's the okay so if we went to the basics we'd say calories in versus calories out is you know if you have more in than it takes to maintain you're gonna gain or lose right so people get so focused on that too but then if that was the case that's where the basic understanding misleads us if it was like okay you, your body needs 1500 calories a day for you to stay the same so people go oh okay I'll eat once one time a day and I'm gonna have this big all mass meal of 1500 calories of ice cream and whatever doesn't work it doesn't make any right. sense it's about the one meal a day is probably one of the worst. Oh yeah, things you miss can do, out right? there. But metabolism if I, kills. Totally. If you, and you can actually speed up your metabolism. So when you understand how to work with your body, you actually eat like I eat like every hour because my metabolism is so high. But so what are you eating today? <laughs> I just yeah, give me, I a, had, give, give me usually in the morning like because I, I get up early and I journal and I create for the day or set you up do my like intentions. A power and, hour? Yeah, and do all that. Sweet. So yeah, get Sweet. that in there. Uh huh. Power out. It's you know makes life <laughs> a little bit more uh, intense. Um, and so, like, I'll have an apple and a bowl of oatmeal and yogurt before even, like, first thing when I get up because I'm already super hungry. Then I do my workout, then I do my shake right after because this is a little tidbit most people don't know. This is how if you take the time to invest in yourself and understand your body, it literally becomes fat burning machine all the time in so many areas. So you have a 45 minute window right after you work out. If you feed your body correctly, you actually gain 66% more muscle from your workout and you burn right, more fat and calories longer. Some protein, feed the muscles. Because what? how you, when you work out, like say, you know, I do biceps, whatever. My, the muscle spindle fibers break down. Mm -hmm. And so to, after, they rebuild and repair to bigger, stronger muscle. So there's that point in process where it's called your EPOC, your excess post-oxygen consumption state, where you're burning fat and calories after your this workout. Is just like excess post-oxygen <laughs> consumption state, isn't that awesome? Okay, right. so at, in that period of time, your body, if you feed it what it needs, the minerals and nutrients it needs, it it grows and it bigger, stronger. because it's broken down. And yes. The, the, it can immediately so people go, oh, okay, I just need to eat after. But so they don't realize if your body can't digest it and assimilate it fast enough, you're not taking advantage of that. So literally the, the, the what greatness of this. about having a shake this, while you work out? Like, well, a, uh, there's points that, that too. It's, if, you're, if your workout's past 45 minutes, your body actually can go into a catabolic state where it starts to burn muscle. So if you're going to have a long workout, then maybe having like a little energy or something in your, your water that it keeps your body utilizing something. But back to where we do the after is that you and I could do the same workout Garrett the mm -hmm. same workout and if I take 30 seconds to feed my body after I get almost double the results how freaking insane is that well, that's like, like it's like the ES commercial yeah. right? <laughs> except it's not ES it's Marcy Law right. <laughs> you know they're, just, they're saying oh yeah you, you know yeah. my workout's not over but there's some real science to it it's, it's not understanding just, just your body so yeah. so yeah, you can get into investing and understanding how to work with your body with food and literally eat a ton of food, eat more. Same thing with your workouts. I teach 12-minute workouts that burn fat for two days. But all that aside, say that we're not even eating and, and working out. The little tidbits of understanding how to work with your body so you're not counteracting against it is what creates so the first thing that would be kind of result. You should eat a breakfast like oh, yeah. pretty much right when you get up. Well, and a lot of people are under the myth that you should work out on an empty stomach. Right? You heard that one? That was um, yeah, I think so. kind of old school, but it's still around. So there's, there is facts and things saying, you know, you're going to burn more fat in the morning, all this other stuff. So people go, okay, eat first thing in the morning, empty stomach. What happens is at night your system shuts down, right? And so first thing in the morning, if you have nothing, like sugar is actually a carrier to fat for you to burn fat. So if you have nothing in your system, the first thing your body does is it attacks your muscle.